No, yes. Does anybody have one of those infrared clickers for advancing the display on a Mac? Please, 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 please. Yeah, Luciano will offer that, and that might have to happen. <laughs> we'll have an infrared connection, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, 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 for tomorrow. I tweeted for it, and uh, I'm sure thousands of people not located here will have one. I think we're waiting for the camera. Okay, I'm Paul Everett. We're going to talk about the state of Pyramid. This is not the state of New York, the state of ecstasy. Uh, this is a different kind of state. I am not Miko, so this is not going to be the best presentation today. Um, I'm a little bit late getting so set up. I apologize. I was going around trying to find the Sarah Palin room. I was looking for the wrong room. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Pyramid. I hope you don't learn anything today because if so, that will break my content-free guarantee. I'll talk a little bit about myself. I am old. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, this is my 20th year of Python and my 20th year of web server. Um, you would have think I would have learned by now. Uh, I, I mastered Python 1.5.2. I've not learned anything since then. All the good stuff was then. Um, I was involved in this little thing called Zope. I know that that word kind of has like a Voldemort name to it. We don't say it in public. Uh, and everything in your speech this morning, Miko, is a time shift of about seven years ago for Zope, about, you know, when do we actually jump in the life raft? <laughs> Which made me think of your joke, and I can't say that on the camera. But later, if you want to hear a funny joke from Luciano about the Titanic, uh, let me know. Um, I am a partner at Agendalist Consulting with uh, Trace Seaver, the creator of the CMF, and Chris McDonough, the creator of Pyramid, and Substance D, and Supervisor, and probably something else that I've forgotten. Um, we manage large web projects. I realize this is a, a self promotion. Um, and increasingly, we're going to talk about something called Substance D, which is a reimagining of Voldemort Zope on top of Pyramid. Okay, enough about me, let's talk about you. Um, first, just to make sure I get the crowd right here, because Pyramid isn't Zope. Pyramid isn't, Pyramid isn't Zope, no matter what some other people might say. Uh, raise your hand if you're not a Plony person. We ha wow, okay, keep your hands up. Keep, keep, did you ever use Zope? Where did you guys come from? <laughs> Tell me, where did you find Pyramid? What made you think of Pyramid? Continue. We want to hear more about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so his point was he's a flask guy. Pyramid seems kind of simple to get started. 
and, but you know that there's going to be some complexity and you think Pyramid will help you with that. Holy shit, that's the marketing pitch I'm going to give in five slides. Awesome. Anybody else right back here? You rose your hand. Same thing? Yes? Did you raise your hand? Something different? Okay. Okay. Yeah? Are you a Python person? Okay. Django guy. Okay. Let's see if we have a pitch for you. Okay. Good. Well, I apologize that you're going to have to learn from me, but we'll do the best we can. Somebody else over here. We have a Flask guy, a Django guy. Turbo Gears. All right. Yeah. All right. You get to see the pyramid in Las Vegas. Okay, raise your hand if you have used Pyramid. Raise your hand if you liked it. Okay, good. That was a cheap question. I mean. Raise your hand if you put something into production for Pyramid. Hey, just about every hand. Good. See, the camera didn't see the hands that were raised, and so I just say, okay, let me ask another one. Raise your hand if you're a Python person, <laughs> which means raise your hand if you're awake. Raise your hand if you are a Python Three person. That thinned out the crowd now, didn't it? Fan doesn't count. Fan, the lifetime commitment. I'm looking for marriage. Okay, so for you, one and a half people who raised your hands, uh, have you put anything into production? Raise your hand if you have put into production anything for Python 3. The moment of victory snatched from our hands. <laughs> we launched the new agendaless website on Python 3 with Substance D. I guess that counts. So it probably doubled the number of websites in the world running Python 3. Okay, overview I'm going to tell a lot of jokes uh, and give a little background on Pyramid. Um, raise your hand if you don't think you know that much about Pyramid. Okay, so some of you, this will be new material. Talk a little bit about where we are in Pyramid and what might be next. Um, what is Pyramid? Why might, why might you be interested in Pyramid? Well, it was created by a guy with a neck beard. Apparently, that's required in the world of programming these days. Uh, that's Chris McDonough on the right. Next, um, one of the main people in Pyramid, Blaise Laflamme from um, Canada, his brother Felix makes all of the artwork for heavy metal bands like Metallica. So we got him to do our artwork, and this is what it looks like. So it's a little bit distinctive, needless to say. I, good luck finding a pony in there. <laughs> now, the next thing that you might like about Pyramid, where did the name come from? Turbo gears and pylons and the pre predecessor to Pyramid, BFG, all met in Las Vegas to discuss a three-way marriage, which is kind of weird. Um, the creator of Pylons, uh, Ben Bangert, had the number two web framework. We are number two. Uh, but he had all this popularity and all this brand, which is good stuff, but he didn't want to be the dictator anymore. You want, you, and how do you retire from dictatorship? Alive. Uh, and they knew that the pylons had reached kind of an end, and they were going to have to go through this really traumatic thing about globals and stuff like that, meaning a rewrite. He just didn't have the energy. Chris had BFG, awesome software. We weren't number two. Uh, so we didn't have the brand. We didn't have the popularity. So there was a decision to get together and talk about how to merge and then see what it would mean for the Turbo Gears people. Where did we choose to do it? Las Vegas. What hotel did we stay in? The Luxor. Of course, then we did the merger. We had to come up with a name. Hmm. What should we call this software that we just merged? How about the building that at night has a beam of light shooting up from the top of it? That's pretty cool. So that's where the name Pyramid came from. Pyramid is a web framework for Python 2 and Python 3. Since we're all here, and this is confidential except for the video that's recording this forever, I'll tell a funny story about the Python 3 arrival for Pyramid. Chris McDonough, October 2011, so two years ago. 
decided to port Pyramid to Python 3, because Python 3 needed one web framework. Uh, and so he did the work for the port, and then he found out that the PSF, the Python Software Foundation, was giving out grants for people porting software to Python 3. So Chris, crafty little guy, emails the PSF and gets a grant to pay him to port Pyramid to Python 3. And then the next day he released it. I don't know if they figured that out, but it was a little bit of a flaw in the selection process. So Pyramid has been completely production ready for Python 3 for two years now and to the point where some of my friends from the tutorial yesterday, I am giving tutorials now for Pyramid on Python 3. Tell the truth, Sebastian, did you run into many troubles because of Python 3? No problem, satisfied customer. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, Chris had something called repose.bfg. Uh, it was kind of what we thought Zoop should have been if it was reimagined in the modern world of Python and WSGI and modern web frameworks, but really small. Not the whole of Zoop, just kind of the important small part of it. It's not Zoop. It's not Zoop. It's not Zoop. Yes, correct. So what are some of the goals of Pyramid for some of you plony, Zoopy people? You're going to have to unplug part of your reptilian brain. You're in a new world. Uh, one of the biggest first goals for Pyramid was it's not a mega framework. It doesn't have all the batteries included. It doesn't have a forum system. Uh, it's going to be, its intent was to be very easy to start. So like Flask and Bottle and some other micro frameworks, you can do a Pyramid app in about that much. In about that much. You know, a small hello world, one single file module, everything inside of it. And there won't be any crap in there unless you put it in there yourself. So Chris's mantra at the time was you only pay for what you eat because, you know, in the world of Zope, we made you eat a lot. Uh, if you've been to a Brazilian steakhouse, you'll know kind of what it's like to be a Zope developer. Uh, so a few choices forced on you, uh, choices of templating system, database system, et cetera and a small, meaning manageable, code base. It all fits inside Chris's brain. Chris has a big brain, but it all still fits in there, as well as some of the contributors. One of the interesting things about BFG, God love Chris McDonough, he released the software, I mean the documentation for BFG before he released the software. You don't see that every day. Chris has made, between BFG and Pyramid, I think he's made about 120 releases. And every release is 100% accurate on the documentation. If there is a change that requires a documentation change, he fixes the documentation. And if it's broken, it's a bug, and he fixes it. He has also had a complete commitment to test coverage, unit test coverage, 100% coverage, from the very beginning before he released the software, and he has lived up to that commitment, uh, it's still 100% covered. Now, inquiring minds might go in and find in the code that little comment that turns off coverage on a little code block, but we'll still say that it's 100% test coverage. He also had a strong commitment to performance, and what he did back in the day, if any of you are online, maybe you can go find it, the uh, kind of shootout, I think he called it, an application that would show what is your framework doing behind your back. I'm going to issue a request, and I'm going to profile it and see all the function calls and count up how many function calls went into answering that request and how fast was the response time and all that. And for a very long time, I think it might still be true, Pyramid was leading on that. At the time, Grok was one of the people that he compared it to, just, you know, so that the graph had the really long bar for Grok and then the really small bar for Pyramid. Uh, and it, it increasingly has a strong air of maturity about Pyramid. Most of the problems have been solved at this point. The changes are kind of refinements, lessons learned, things like that. No major things on the horizon. Uh, we're trying to think a little bit for our Flask friends and our Django friends and Turbo Gears fans, friends and just Python 3 people coming and thinking, what should I do for web framework? 
what is Pyramid Story? Where does it fit in? We can print shirts that say we're number two and be very proud of it, uh, but we got to become number two. Uh, and where do we fit in is exactly what you were saying. We want to occupy a space where you can start small with a single file application or the tutorial that we went through, gradually learn a little bit, but Pyramid gives these great facilities for making a ginormous application of yours. In fact, Pyramid is now known as a framework framework. Something that gives you the facilities where inside for your own development team or your customers or partners, you can build something that they can plug into in a sane way. Miko, I really liked your point about the best damn plug-in system in the world. Hopefully this will be better uh, because we did learn a lot of lessons from that. And from a business perspective, if you know, this is where you are when you start talking to a customer and trying to get into their wallet and, and get money for your children's college, and here is the delivery of the application, you know, some, app, some mega frameworks, who shall remain nameless, give you a starting point which is like here. And then the first thing you have to do is go back to here, and then you can go back to the place that you really need. And then some of the micro frameworks put you here. And you've got to be smart enough to do that. Our goal is to put you just before the finishing line, just before what you need to finish to deliver your application, but not any further. So giving a good starting point. Uh, and, and we want to back that up and not be full of bleep, bleep by having some real framework, framework stuff in there. We only scratched the surface in the tutorial. This is a legitimate claim with the configuration system and events and overriding and extending the request method and custom directives and event pred or, uh, view predicates, et cetera. Uh, Pyramid doesn't have too many opinions. Uh, it does have three first class templating languages, Chameleon, Mako, Jinja2. Uh, let me see if I can do this correctly. Raise your hand if you're a chameleon person. You can raise your hand multiple times, by the way. Raise your hand if you're a Mako person. You were supposed to raise your hand. We had two for that. Raise your hand if you're a Jinja2 person. Raise your hand if you're a Django template person. Raise your hand if I didn't call your name. What do you use? Genshi? Okay. Do you like it? Yeah? All right. Yeah? Huh? It was yours back here, was it Genshi? No? D XSLT? <laughs> Wimps. So that's a little bit of the history of Pyramid, why it exists, how it got here, what the inside of Chris McDonough's brain looks like. Uh, let's talk about where we currently are in Pyramid. There's a 1.5 release that is in Alpha 2. It is feature complete, so a whole bunch of stuff might still happen on it, uh, but it is largely done. Interesting story. I was in the UK giving uh, pyramid training two, three weeks ago, and it was the same training that I just had to give here for the Plone Conference, uh, Python 3 for pyramid. Blah, blah, blah. And I, fit, I was on the plane back from Cambridge like, damn it, awesome, I'm done. And then Chris goes and checks in a commit, removing Chameleon and Mako from Pyramid. He said he was going to do that for 2.0, but some guy, some contributor, went and did thousands of lines of work in the documentation of the tests and the code base and everything. And now Pyramid doesn't even have a templating system. You have to add Pyramid under Chameleon, Pyramid under Mako, Pyramid under Jinja2 as a Pyramid add-on to inject a templating system into Pyramid. And that's pretty cool. It really is getting smaller. And so our Genshi people can make sure that they feel like they're not left out. Um, and it is very easy to add another templating system. Very easy to add. You looked at the renderer docs, it's like this to make a factory for that. Another change in Pyramid 1.5, uh, I'm on a traversal kick these days. Traversal is our way of doing things in the world of Zope, also known as the right way. But the rest of the flock, the rest of the herd is doing this routes thing. Uh, and Chris is working on a system to try and blend the benefits of those. If you are a mostly traversal person, but you have a need for a little bit of routes, there's a hybrid mode in Pyramid that lets you get a couple of hops of, of 
of uh, routes and then the rest being traversal. Pyramid 1.5 has some new features to help you generate URLs when you're in that mode. Uh, the life of being a, a rock star like Chris and a benevolent dictator means that he gets to sit in IRC and answer the same question over and over, with that question being, ultimately, you didn't install setup tools correctly, and you don't know what Python package your virtual environment's in. So Chris added this command pdist report, which is the run this, paste it on paste bin, and let me see what per version of Python you're using. Did you actually do a virtual environment? What's in that virtual environment? Uh, did you install your package in development mode? Blah, blah, blah. And then a little bit of changes on uh, the way we do view predicates. Pyramid 1.5, where we are right now, is also the beginning of it's bigger than Chris McDonough. Uh, we're getting a lot of contributors. Um, three people in particular uh, have really taken over. Chris faked his death, his own death, for a while. Um, earlier this year, we were on a project in Silicon Valley, uh, which was just about as dumb as you might imagine. And afterwards, he came back and he said, I'm not going in IRC for the rest of my life. And so we just told people he died, kind of, sort of. And people picked up the slack. Some other of the core people in Pyramid came forward, started doing pull requests, approval, and answering questions in IRC. So there is a big upswing in, in leadership, as well as people being interested. People being interested, awesome. Uh, there's also fun stuff that's happening. Uh, let's see. Was anybody at the Halle Sprint in Germany? Clayton was, yeah. All right, Timo was. How was it? Excellent. And you're going to have, there's going to be another one in the area, I believe. Chris McDonough is going to Budapest for the Rupai conference and to Ireland for speaking after that. We have this going on here. Chris is threatening to have a Substance D uh, core developer team sprint in January, and then we're going to be at PyCon in Montreal in March. If you'd like us to come to your place, that could be arranged. Uh, as I mentioned, Pyramid started life with a deep commitment to documentation. I know every open source project does the same thing. Um, but it's always been documentation written for the audience of Chris McDonough. And not everybody is Chris McDonough. And so yeah, documentation is complete, albeit a little intimidating. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever read the Pyramid documentation. It's a little bit complete. Uh, but it's not very evaluator friendly. And um, what it really needed was someone who had no idea what they were doing. So I took over and decided to start writing some evaluation documentation. There's a quick tour for evaluators, which is all the major concepts in a web framework, little snippets. And now there's a quick tutorial, which is a tutorial that I'm giving for paid customers, is also available for free in the Pyramid book, the quick tutorial. I'm also writing a quick tutorial for traversal, which is not quick at all, but it is a tutorial. Um, the documentation, now this is kind of a weird thing. Uh, we decided to show our love for Python 3 by making Python 3 the default for our introductory documentation, uh, which is an interesting step. The documentation still works completely if you do Python 2.7, but it presumes that you're going the route of PyVenv and um, print statements that have the function call instead of just a keyword. Um, and we're also trying to do some work during this year. We're kind of talking about getting the, the, our world of Pyramid together and all the companies that went to the sprints, et cetera, and seeing if in 2014 we can get everybody still on Zope, not Plone, both of them, um, and people that are interested in Python 3 and people that are interested in getting off of pylons to drum up some business in 2014 to teleport people into the future. I don't know how much demand there is out there for getting to Python 3, but it's an interesting business process to go in and do an inventory of what people have. We had a major client that we just uh, bid on. They have a project with a pip requirements file referencing versions which are no longer available on the cheese shop. Uh, so there are some people out there that could use a helping hand. Kind of as part of our little universe. How am I going? 
Keep talking, Aaron, so the other people come in. Um, raise your hand if you ever used a form. All right. Raise your hand if you liked it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> raise your hand if you didn't hate it. That's a little bit better. Um, Deform uh, is a form library from Chris McDonough uh, with a schema library called Colander that goes with it for doing auto-generated forms. Um, not as easy as it sounds. And uh, all of the sex appeal that you would come to expect from Chris McDonough. And so there was a corollary project started called Deform Under Bootstrap, where Dolman and Tom Lazar, I think, and some others uh, gave it a bootstrap theme and used select two widgets to make it look really good, or chosen widgets to make it look really good. But it was a separate package. Deform 2 is the remarriage of them. Bootstrap 3, jQuery 2, good looking widgets, select two will be in the future for Deform. Um, he just has to get a lot of the tests fixed, that I think is where he is on that. Um, as far as where we are now, there's an effort that Chris has been doing for about a year and a half. He got tired of writing the same stuff over and over for consulting customers on top of Pyramid, kind of the Zopi world with the ZMI-like thing. So he came up with this package called Substance D, a term from a Philip Dick novel. Uh, and it is a reimagining of the world of Zope on top of Pyramid with modern practices and fixes for a lot of the things that we inflicted on all of you. Uh, we used to joke when we started the company that um, you should do business with us because when it comes to Zope, we know where the bodies are buried because we buried them in the first place. Uh, and with Substance D, we're trying to go up a little higher than Pyramid and give something that is more of a full stack framework for civilized applications, meaning our kind of applications, traversal, hierarchies, hierarchical security, stuff like that. There's another project on top of Substance D, which is really cool, Kotti, K-O-T-T-I, which is traversal on top of SQL Alchemy with a content type system and pluggable views and stuff like that. Substance D is not an end user application like Plone. It is a, it's a framework to let you make a specific custom application for your customer, and it has a whole bunch of stuff in it, form, security, et cetera. Uh, as an example, Leonardo, who I've, who I've known for seven centuries, just showed up at this conference. He's talking three doors down, so he could, can't be in here to pitch it himself. He just deployed an extremely large Substance D application uh, here in Brazil. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if this works. Yes, okay, this is uh, demo.substancedd.net, which you can go to, uh, log in as admin admin, and see the new ZMI. Um, you'll get a folder view. If all of you do it at the same time, you'll see changes coming in from other people, because Chris wired up server-side events, SSE. And you get tabs up at the top for all the different management views, just like the Zopi kind of tabs, and content types where you can add things, and facilities for indexing and re-indexing and security, and references and workflows and undo and stuff like that. OK, uh, the two best words of any presentation in conclusion. Um, what's up next for Pyramid? Uh, it's largely done from a software perspective, which means that we need to refine our story from a marketing perspective and go explain to people what is Pyramid, why should you give a damn, frankly. Uh, and I'm glad to see that we're making a little bit of progress on occupying our place. Uh, we're the Goldilocks framework, not too small, not too big, just right. Uh, and I, I really want to work on a Pyramid uh, add-on developer guide to really explain to dummies like me, I mean, I'm going to have to learn it in order to write the guide, uh, to explain to people why this thing is so cool as a framework framework. What are the features in here that do what Miko was saying today about the best plugin system ever? There's a lot of there there in Pyramid uh, for that. Um, a very small thing that you can put on things from other people and make your own things that you share with others. Uh, better documentation, particularly for evaluators, and events with beer. Um, I hope I covered every, everything. Is there any questions? Make one up if you don't have one. I asked you a question, Miko, so you got to ask me a question. We'll come back to you.
Does anybody else have a question? Please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Timo, go. The question was, what can we do to make sure Pyramid and Plone don't diverge too far from each other from a technology perspective? Is that right? Uh, you're adopting Chameleon. That's cool. Uh, but there is, uh, I didn't want to say this. Um, I get to say this because I was the co-founder of Zope. Plone is carrying the dead body of Zope around on its back. Let's face it. Uh, and 10 years from now, that body is not going to be alive. So uh, you got to think about what you're going to do and don't repeat like a Zope 3 mistake or some other mistake about waiting too long and watching everyone leave for the exits before it's too late. The best thing you could do perhaps is really to constrain the risk of a small step. If you think of the Plone stack, and you think of all the archaeology underneath and the stuff that Plone 5 is going to leave out, unfortunately, that's the easy stuff. The stuff after that really gets into pulling the weed up by the roots. If you can just stick to Pyramid and not talk about Substance D or Cotty or something like that, you can get Whiskey, Python 3, deprecate a bunch of APIs, get people on top of Dexterity so they don't see the stuff down below. There might be a good story for that. It would be interesting to have a sprint to see if you just did the smallest amount possible, how much pyramid could you get into Plone before you hit an unsolvable problem? Clayton. Uh, that question is under further review. Uh, the question was, is, was pyramid built by aliens? Um, and I'm sure were an alien to actually be in this room, he would say no. Uh, do you have a question now? Okay. Okay. Spanky. Talk about the server layout. Yes, uh, Pyramid via WSGI Whiskey has a deployment story which is wonderfully rich uh, compared to Z server. Um, you have uh, Waitress, which was written by what was his name again? Chris McDonough, a uh, pure Python, Python two, Python three production quality, moderately high performance tolerant to crap uh, HTTP WSGI app server. Um, but you can also use mod WSGI under Apache, which is really cool for a number of reasons. Nginx with uWSGI, GUnicorn, probably some other things that I have left out. Or you can do it in your classic mode, running behind proxy pass. Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, moving from Plone to Pyramid, could it be possible for you to do an archetype Plone to pyramid migration tutorial. I'm glad you added the word tutorial at the end, because that means you just show how to do it and run away afterwards and not live with it. <laughs> um, I think that is uh, very much worth discussing. The challenge is pyramid is too small in the stack. You would need to put the other things like form system and type system and stuff like that. So substance D or CADI would be the thing to do that for. Um, and there are some pretty good examples sitting out there waiting for me to sprinkle the evaluator touch on to provide that for you. I am very interested in that because that's my level of development. I used to have the, when, back when I wrote Deliverance, my motto was 25 lines is the right size for a program. Anything beyond that and you're overthinking. Uh, Paul. The last one isn't happening unless they start an anti-social network. Um, so the question was, how resilient are we to Chris getting hit by a bus? Michael Miracle is the one who was Chris while Chris was faking his death. So I guess we should have Chris fake his death repeatedly. Maybe Christmas is a good time. Yes? Right. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as part of our bid, our bid is to move a pylons to a pyramid. We know a lot about it. The question was, how much work is it to migrate a pylons app to pyramid? There used to be these helpers that let you, like they were methadone. They let you continue thinking in pylons term, but sitting on top of pyramid. We discourage that now because pyramid is mature enough. You should adopt the pyramid idioms for doing things. Uh, there are probably two places that you really hit yourself, that global helpers thing and uh, the way that controllers work. Other than that, I think it should be straightforward, and there are a lot of people able to help in IRC and on the channel, and a lot of docs that talk about it. Yes? Right, right. To substance D. Oh, I didn't expect you to say substance D on that. Oh, cool. Okay, well, substance D is just kind of an assembly of some things you could have added to pyramid yourself. So whether it's pyramid and into form and chameleon and blah, blah, blah. So I'll just say from a substance D perspective, uh, internationalization type stuff, multilingual content type stuff. Um, no, we've got workflow. It's just not as uh, configure uh, through the web configurable. Uh, you would be missing a lot of the power user through the web ability. Most of that is shifted over to developers rather than pointy clicky. Good point. The question. Right. The, the question is do we have any concern about the quality of the pyramid add ons? Because we all know that they can kind of get out of control. We should do a better job of that. We don't. We have a thing called the Pylons Project, which is a place to put a bunch of code. Pyramid is one, Substance is one, Deform is one, Waitress is one, et cetera. But there are a lot of add-ons in there, and we don't do anything, and we should do it before it's too late. Last question. Yes, yes. It doesn't have uh, to be a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What will be the through the web story for Pyramid? Nothing ever, ever. How's that? Substance D, maybe. Uh, but Pyramid is too far down. It's for you to create it through the web. So, yes, okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye.